Hey everybody, this is Molly. Okay, what I wanted to get started with is showing you an, a product that I just got in, and I want to show you how it works. You may this was released, I think, uh, latter part of last year, but it's new to me. And what they are is the Heartfelt Creations 3D shaping molds, flower shaping molds. I bought two different sets. I bought the 3D Floral Basic mold and the 3D rose shaping mold, if I got that too close. So I had been telling a friend of mine that I just want to be able to find some way to press some wrinkles and crinkles and stuff into flowers, you know, in a one-step process and all. We had looked at uh, silicone molds at Michael's and Hobby Lobby and stuff, and I kept trying to do There ought to be a way to press them more. Dadgum, if I didn't see a, a video recently from Heartfelt Creations, and what they are is they're two-part molds. You cut your flowers. They're meant to match their specific dyes, but what I want to show you today, which I think would be perfect and all, but what I want to show you today is I used punches. I just pulled out some of my flower punches, punched a bunch of uh, flowers, and then here they are here. I'm going to get off camera in a minute. I'm going to ink the heck out of them and do the edges and stuff like that, and we're going to see if it works. But the theory is you cut your flowers, you lay them in the molds, and then you, you know, fill the mold up, press them together. I'll walk you through how it works. Okay, so let me get started, and I'm going to get busy inking these. But what I want to tell you is we're going to experiment, because I haven't made these flowers yet, as you can see. So what I did was I pulled out some old papers. This happens to be a Graphic 45 right here, you can see. So I just punched out some flowers there. You know Graphic 45 paperweight. This is a piece of paper out of a, I think it was a Memento tablet that I bought from Hobby Lobby. Not only is it lightweight, it's kind of got a rough tooth to it and all. And so I cut some flowers out of that. We're going to see how those work. This is some heavier cardstock uh, from We Are Memory Keepers. I just love the wood grain look of it and all, so I cut some flowers out of that. My guess is it's going to be a little heavy, but we'll see. This is some paper, and I don't know who it's from. I'm going to tell you, I pulled a lot of K and Company. Does anybody remember who that is? Anyway, it almost looks like K and Company. I love the fronts and backs of their paper. I'm using as many two-sided papers as I can, just so my flower will be pretty, you know, if it crinkles and wrinkles up. But I love these papers. Then I pulled out some uh, Prima. Was this Prima? This is uh, basic gray older paper. I think this is Prima. The Prima may be a little heavy, but I love the colors. And then this is basic gray, a little bit lighter cardstock, if you can see. And again, I love the uh, front and back of this paper, so I'm hoping that's going to work. And then I pulled a bunch of um, really old, really old uh, K and Company papers, but. I think these are Brenda Walton's. I'm not sure. I love her work. But anyway, uh, so I think they're going to come out pretty because the paper is lightweight. The other thing I did was I cut a bunch of flowers using my different um, punches in a lighter weight, you know, the cardstock you buy at Walmart kind of cardstock, just white cardstock. Cut some of those out. And the punches I used, this one is an EK Success um, punch that I have. This one is a Stampin' Up! punch that I bought. Love it. And uh use it a lot. Well, I skipped this one, but this was on their uh, on the clearance rack at Stampin' Up. Great little stackable flowers there. This is still available, I know, at Stampin' Up, and it's the Daisy Punch. It is a great punch. It's from Stampin' Up. This one right here is another little Stampin' Up punch that I bought. I believe I got it on the clearance rack. I'm not sure, though, so we'll see on that. Hold on, my husband's coming in here singing. Let's see if we can hear him. And then this is a punch I have from Tim Holtz uh, through Sizzix, and I like the shape of that little flower. So those are the punches. Those are the papers. Now, let me get started uh, coloring them and trying to make something out of them. Okay, I've come back now off camera. I have inked the flowers. And what I want to show you is just, uh, I got something on my flowers. That's not what I want to show you. Anyway, I used uh, Flirty Flamingo from Stampin' Up. I used Calypso Coral and uh, what, Crushed Curry, I think, from Stampin' Up to do these. Aren't they pretty? I have no idea how these are going to turn out. I just wanted to show you what I've got. Just a little Crushed Curry in the middle of that Daisy Punch. This one's these, this bunch. I wanted to show you what they're like right now. Is um, Flirty Flamingo and Lemon Lime Twist, I think, from Stampin' Up. And you can see here I used um, a little mixture of the yellow and the 
uh, Calypso coral there. And then on these other flowers, you can see I've just used some Tim Holtz um, inks, which were tea dye, what is, no, vintage photo, I'm sorry, vintage photo, and just a second, and I'll tell you, vintage photo, and what's the other one? Walnut stain. So the edges of the flowers are done with walnut stain and vintage photo. Did a little uh, rich raspberry, razzleberry from stamping up on the edge of these flowers and all. Rich razzleberry on the edge of these. So that's what I just wanted to show you that I have inked the edges. So we're at this stage now. So now I'm actually going to lay them in the um, molds and then run them through the big shot and we'll see how that works. Okay, hold on just a minute. Okay, right here I've got the uh, 3D rose shaping mold, and again, it was intended to be used with heartfelt creation uh, flowers, which would fit perfectly in here, and you can see the pretty little leaf and all, but we're not going to use that. We're going to use the um, punches that I had, and I'm just going to lay these things in and try to get them to fit into these little pockets, and we're going to see what happens. Okay, let's see. And I'm just, you can see, I'm just trying to find some that are close to the same size. Okay. And I'm just, I'm starting off with this one that I, uh, is the light uh, cardstock, one of the lighter cardstocks that I bought and all. And as you can see on these things, they have three little pegs here. Three sides have the little pegs. So those just fit down in here. Oops, I almost forgot. Before we do this step, we're going to want to spray this with a little bit of water. Let me see if I can find my water uh, spritzer. It was here. Hold on just a second. Okay, so I just have water in a bottle, and I'm going to just spritz it a little bit. You don't want to do too much, and you'll notice I've got them, uh, you know, ink side down, you know. So then you just lay this little thing on, kind of line up the feet, hope your flowers don't move too much, and you mush it together. Boy, that is hard, huh? Okay, so now you have a little sandwich. Okay, I'm going to go run it through my uh, big shot, and let's see what happens. Okay, I'm back. Oh, I think I'm loving it. Now, I wet them too much. I can tell you already, I sprayed too much water. And the reason, oh, I don't know if y'all can see that, how pretty it is. And you can see they kind of moved around. But they're very, very wet. But can y'all, oh, I hope you can see that. All the pretty wrinkles and wrinkles and crinkles in there and see how they come out. And yes, you could do this with a pen. Oop, see how that one's too wet, so I tore it. Okay, so note to self, not quite as much water, okay. Oh, I love how it cups the edges and all. And again, these aren't the flowers from their dyes. These are um, punches. Okay, let me get these out. Okay, I am love. I hope you can see. Of course, I tore one because I can tell you I was wetting too much. Can you see the edges and all that, how pretty it's shaped? Now, these are real, real wet, so I'm going to set them aside. Okay, we're going to do some more. I'm not going to wet them as much this time, though. Oh, I love how that's turning out. Now, that one with the little torn edge, we're going to just live with that. Okay, let's see if we can do some more. Let's see, which ones do we want to do? Okay, we're going to take, let's take the printed paper that's just the printed cardstock. Uh, and start laying some of those in. Okay, who here is going to be responsible for reminding me not to wet it as much? Can y'all see how I'm not really matching up where they lay? I am trying to find some, you know, close to the right size. I'm trying to pay attention to which direction I lay them. Okay, that flower may be too big for that. Let's go with that. Okay, now I'm going to do less spraying. Okay, we're going to line up our little feet. Smush it down. Okay. Pick it up. Okay, I'll be back. Oh, they're coming out pretty. Oh, I hope y'all can see that. Can you see how pretty that shaped that flower? Now, can you also see that flower is not even the same shape as that and all? Um, let me show you like this right here. I can just cut off this little point. I'm just cutting off the point from that punch. And now it looks like that flower was actually meant to be there. Okay, that's a little pokey out here. We're going to cut that off. Oh, that's pretty. 
Okay, so that was some pretty heavy cardstock from, I'm going to tell you, Prima, but I'm loving how the flowers come out shaped in this flower mold. Okay, so that is using punches with the rose uh, 3D mold. I'm getting this last one out. Hold on just a second. Oh, I love it. Hope you can see that. Look how pretty that's going to be. Wait till you see when I put the stamens and stuff in. Okay, so we're going to set that one aside. Now, they're going to have to dry before I can do too much more with them. You want to do one more with the rose shape? Let's see. Let's see what we want to do. Okay, we've used the colored cardstock. We've used the white cardstock that was just dyed. <laughs> okay, I can't. I think I'm going to do a couple more prints just because I love how they came out. Isn't this silly? I am just not paying attention too much to how I lay them in there, trying to match up the little, you know, buds a little bit. Can't use these big ones, darn it. Okay, so that's that. That that is there one that'll fit this one? No, I don't think so. Okay, a little bit of water. Now this is some K and Company paper. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Got, whoop, do I have my feet the wrong way? Oh well, you know it would help if you put your feet in the right way. Hold on just a second. Now I didn't make these molds, but it seems like if they got this kind of corner cut off, why didn't they cut off that corner? Okay, I'll be right back. Oh, love them. Love how that came out. I know you can do, some of y'all can do this with styluses and things, but not get all those wrinkles just perfectly like that. I love how it's coming out. That's going to be some beautiful flowers. Okay, again, do you see how this punch is really kind of too big for that? We're going to just fake our way a little cut. And it's coming out perfect. May have to re-ink the edge a little bit. You know how Mother Nature just here? Oh, that's so pretty. I'm loving it. Loving it. Okay, I'm going to lay some in the other flower mold. This was the rose one, intended to use with their rose dyes. Now let's do the generic 3D flower shaping mold. I hope y'all can see the shape of this thing. Now, I have used this once already, this one, and I got to tell you, I kind of wish they hadn't done the little center like that. Okay, again, this is a generic one meant to use with a lot of their different flowers. Look, I'm actually going to lay daisies in there, which are nowhere near what those were originally. Okay, let's lay a couple of other flowers in there. Let's see what we got here. Too big. We're going to lay that in there. These are the ones that I had painted with the... Now, you can see how big that is for there. We're going to see how that comes out. Lay that in there. Lay that in there. Hold on, I'm trying. I'm trying to pick them up. Lay that in there. Oh, I hope this works. Lay that in there. A little swish swish. Not too. I'm doing a lot of water. Sorry. Okay, let me pay attention to how my feet go on there. Okay, got them smushed down. Make that easy to make a sandwich. Okay. Oh, I can't wait to. See. Oh, I love it. Look how pretty. See what I'm saying about? Look how it crinkled. Can you see how it crinkled up the edges? So pretty. I love that. Love that. Great look. Love how it does the daisy with the crinkled edges. I just don't like that little thing in the middle. I understand that's supposed to be the middle of a flower, but I could live without that. Okay, love the crinkles. Oh, like it. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about running it through your machine, and then I'm going to do some more flowers and we'll come back. When you put this together, she tell uh, the young lady from Heartfelt Creation that owns it, I've forgotten what her name is. Anyway, she shows you on her video, which is much better than mine. She lays her dyes in there, wets it a little bit, and then she runs it through a vagabond, and then she runs it through a big shot, and then she runs it. So she'll show you a couple of different machines, but she tells you on there, your machine, everyone's different. So you'll find the sandwich you need to make. On mine, I have found, I have the uh, Big Shot Pro, a little larger machine, and what I have found is I use a bottom plate, you know, just the base plate. Hold on just a second, I'll show you. I use this clear plate. Not so clear, but anyway, a clear plate. And then what I have found, I've tried a hundred different things. I just fold it up, you know, the back of the pads that you buy from Michael's or somewhere. I folded a couple of those in half. So it's like I have ten sheets, two, four, six, eight, ten sheets of little lightweight, lightweight cardboard on here. Then this is sandwiched in the middle. So I, this is how I'm running mine through. Look, just like that. 
and it seems to work. I've tried it with different plates, can't get it to go through, too light, too little, too much, too heavy. So for me, this works perfectly. You might, your sandwich might be a little different, but just kind of play with it and see. Okay, now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna run a lot of these flowers through and I'll come back and show you some finished flowers. Okay, hold on. Okay, I want to show you some of the flowers completed and I've switched to my phone for recording to try and get better color and all. So I'm hoping this working is working. Okay, here's uh, some of the ones I did in the, you know, kind of summer tropical colors and things. This was that Daisy Punch from Stampin' Up. I hope you can see how it added the uh, shape and the wrinkles on the petals that I think just adds so much. Here it is, a couple of the ones inked with yellow. Here it is inked in uh, Calypso Coral in the yellow color. I just love the texture. Now this punch is pretty by itself, but I tell you, when you add those um, those creases to the uh, each petal and all, it sure adds something. And then here's those first ones I did where I had colored the paper with some, uh, I think I used Stampin' Up! inks on these. You can see where I put a little, couple of stamens in the middle and a little bling on that one. But can you see how pretty it has crinkled those edges and cupped each petal and all? I just love it. Okay, look, here's some smaller ones. Now, you know you can buy these at Hobby Lobby and stuff, but at 2 in the morning in your own color when you want to make your flowers, that is a perfect, um, low-cost, effective way to make flowers. And I love how it did the petals. Uh, here's some more. I just used different stamens, double layered the thing. I just love the texture. Okay, if I say love 15 more times, I'll get a prize. There's, this is the least of, you know, this is straight out of the mold and there's some stamens stuck on there. Excuse me. So you can see how easy that is. Okay, here's some of that K and Company paper. And you can see where when I pulled the stamens through, I just I punched some little flower shapes out of green paper to use to glue my stamen down to the back. Love how it shaped it. If you can see how those edges are so pretty and crinkled and all, um, love how these flowers came out. Here's a bigger one. Okay, look, can you see the texture on that one? So you can see how pretty these molds uh, shape those flowers. Let me just bore you. I mean, uh, let me just show you a few more. Um, this was more of that K and Company paper. Again, I've just used different stamens and things in the middle there. Isn't that pretty? But I didn't have to do any work but glue these layers together, punch a hole in the middle, and put the stamens through, and they each had their own little texture. Now, here's some of the brighter pinks. I just, I'm showing you these. These aren't the prettiest flowers you're ever going to come across, but I just want to show you how fast I mean. Do you see all those, what would you call those, wrinkles, crinkles, something on the edges? I love that. kind of looks like a dogwood. Um... So I love how with very little work, this is what I wanted to show you, one of the, one, ooh, sorry, when it first came out, how pretty they look. Okay, here's one with a little glitter on the edge. Okay, whoops, sorry, I'm dropping my phone. Okay, let me show you, oh, these, I want to show you these, just because, oh, I'm sorry, i am got my finger in the way. This is with that very vanilla paper from Stamping Up, it's kind of a heavier weight cardstock, but I love the, if you can see, it's just off-white, White is good, but it, this off white would be so pretty. If you can imagine if I'd taken the time to ink that up or something, how pretty it came out. This centerpiece you see I'm using is a punch that I have from EK Success. I like using the mother flowers with stamens. Here's that same paper, just with some stamen in the middle. Okay, I'm going to reach across you again. Sorry. Oh, oh, let me get those out of the way. So I'm just wanting to show you how well all these different papers. What was this one? Oh, this was that heavyweight Prima paper. Look how pretty those flowers came out. I love it. So you could make your own flowers to match all your collections. Can you see those? How pretty each one came out? Oops, coffee pot's ready. Okay. Look, that is just pretty. And like I say, you can buy these flowers for, you know, five or six, seven in a pack for five or six dollars, four or five dollars, but you can make hundreds of them for that uh, just in no time with these molds. How pretty are those? Love how it textured it. Okay, I don't think I need to show... Ooh, let me just... Isn't that pretty? I love how it textured it. Okay, this was that Momento paper that is that lighter weight cardstock. Now, this is one of the ones I actually did lay it down on one of those... You know the um, flower shaping tool kits that you'll see somewhere? They're just styluses with ball point... You know, ball ends. I actually tried to give more shape to some of these flowers. And I'm telling you, after just no time, my hands were killing me. Uh, my shoulders were starting to hurt. I understand I'm a little older, but I'm not that old. But anyway, so it was really starting to hurt. And uh, after a while, I said, to heck with it. I'm just going to use what comes out of the mold. 
and though they seem to be pretty enough. Here's some of the Graphic 45, and that is heavy cardstock. Don't like the centers I use, just kind of ignore those. I'll come up with something maybe copper colored in the middle of those. But I just wanted to show you how they came out. I love that. Okay, so moral to the story is the Heartfelt Creations 3D flower shaping molds. I use the rose one most, love it the most. The 3D uh, floral one, that's kind of the generic one. You can see how with punches that I had on hand, how quickly and easily I made just a bouquet of flowers different with different papers I had on hand. Old bling, old stamens and things. Um, just love them. If you are interested in ordering the... Um, flower shaping molds and you don't already have a favorite place to go to, I will be starting to put those into my blog just within the next day or so that I can order and hopefully offer you one of the best prices you can find around and all. But I just wanted to share that new tool with you. I love it. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, please head to my blog, Crafting Memories with Molly at blogspot.com and love visiting with y'all. Y'all have fun. Bye-bye.